Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Kemaford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, out engage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. We've all been there. We make what we think is a rational decision. And then seconds or minutes or days later, we wonder, what was I thinking? Was it a temporary lapse of sanity? Were we just distracted and made that decision anyway? We knew it wasn't the right decision or the best decision, but in that moment, we made a decision anyway. And it ended up being a stupid one. Why? First, let's look at the science behind, quote, stupid, unquote. Does this mean that we are indeed stupid? No, of course not. It simply means that not every decision we make is actually rational. We see what we want to see filtered through our inherent cognitive biases. And then we make decisions based on those biases. And these biases, these cognitive biases, we all have them. Now, a cognitive bias refers to a systematic pattern of deviation from the norm or from rationality and judgment. Now, these biases cause conclusions, inferences, assumptions about people and situations to be drawn in a less than logical fashion. And we all create our own subjective social reality (laughs) from our perception of the input that we receive both from outside of us and inside of us. How can we stop making stupid decisions and start making smart ones? By spending time understanding our cognitive biases. When we understand and check our biases, we make better decisions and think more accurately. When we understand, we make better decisions. So I wanna think about how to actually make good decisions as consistently as possible. Let's talk about your biases. Our bias impacts our business. Neil Jacobstein, an expert in artificial intelligence, notes that we all use AI and algorithms to mitigate and compensate for many of the following heuristics in human cognition, which is just another word for thinking. Check out these biases, and as I run through them, please think about which ones are uh, familiar to you. Anchoring bias. Tendency to rely too heavily or to anchor on one trait or piece of information when making decisions. Well, he's available for the job, and focusing too much on that and missing that maybe he's not really qualified. Availability bias. Tendency to overestimate the likelihood of events with greater availability in memory, which can be over-optimistic, overestimating favorable and pleasing outcomes. Well, it'll probably work out. Bandwagon. Tendency to do or believe things just because many other people are doing or believing the same. Think about herd mentality, groupthink. That's the uh, bandwagon effect. Hindsight bias. (laughs) Don't you hate it when someone says, I knew it was going to go that way, or I knew it all along. It's the tendency to see past events as being predictable at the time those events actually happened. But that's why we say hindsight's 2020, because we couldn't see it clearly when it was happening. Normalcy bias. Refusal to plan for or to react to a disaster which has 
never happened before. So we're sort of sticking our head in the sand because we can't pattern match that this actually is a disaster because we have nothing in our frame of reference. Optimism bias, tendency to be over optimistic, overestimating favorable and pleasing outcomes. So the website update, it'll be done in like what, two weeks? <sighs> two months later, it's done, right? Planning fallacy. This can be a bedfellow of the optimism uh, bias. Tendency to overestimate benefits and underestimate costs and underestimate task completion times. Many of us experience that in business. Sunk cost or loss aversion. So this is like the disutility of giving up an object uh, is greater than the utility associated with actually acquiring it, you know? Well, you know, we've already invested such and such, so let's just cut and run. Or um, we don't even do it because it looks like too much effort, okay? So that's just a partial list. But Jacobstein is fond of pointing out that your neocortex has not had a major upgrade in 50,000 years. It is the size, shape, and thickness of a dinner napkin. What if, he asks, it was the size of a tablecloth or of California? Let's look at the benefits of bias because we can actually optimize yours. Biases can be helpful. They filter through information overwhelm. They help make sense of the world. They allow us to make quick decisions in a fast-paced world. Check out this recent challenge that an executive coaching client of mine had. So my client needed to hire a VP of marketing to take the company to the next level. He had four candidates that had made it to the interview stage and one even made it on site, met with four different key stakeholders and was being fast tracked. I asked him why he favored this one candidate by such a long shot. And as I listened, I heard the following biases. He was showing planning fallacy bias, underestimating how long the process would take and what a great hire would cost, anchoring bias, focusing on one piece of information, the candidate's current job accomplishments, but not his entire career. His resume had two decades of one to two year roles. Wait a minute, this guy's a job jumper availability bias, because the candidate was successful in a huge company with tons of resources available. Our client assumed he'd be successful in a much smaller company with about one sixth of the resources the candidate was accustomed to. Optimism bias. Thinking we'd have a solid candidate identified, screened, hired within six weeks, not for a position this crucial. I expressed these concerns. I explained how cognitive biases worked and can be busted when you take your time, make better decisions when you're not hungry, tired, or stressed, take time before making a decision, which will enable you to think about the future and the impact. Second, get an outside view. Ask a trusted advisor or peer for their opinion, hopefully somebody very different from you with different biases. Third, Consider other options. What else could you do? Could you slow down the process of hiring? Could you consider the person for a temp trial period to see if they make it? Then he asked me to interview the candidate because he was following my advice. He was taking his time getting an outside view and considering other options. I deeply questioned the candidate in each of the bias areas our client had. The result, whoa. This guy was not the right fit for the company, not by a long shot. The excellent news is our client avoided a costly hiring mistake. And the even more excellent news is that he still had three candidates that would fit the bill. Fast forward, here's what we ended up doing. We ended up hiring a fantastic woman who had about half of the experience as, as the other older guy, but the experience was relevant. Yes, she was the first senior leader on the executive team, and that did stir things up. Thank goodness, because diversity has made a huge difference for this particular client. So while we're all still making stupid decisions now and then, welcome to being human. 
Once you understand cognitive biases, you'll mitigate risk by implementing the tools I mentioned above. Look at the show page. We're going to have a couple of little goodies there that will help you make better decisions. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there, and please tell your friends.